Today I'm going to talk about a very important subject. And the subject is that we are not just our brains. And the edge of science is this is exactly where it's taking us. And I will explain this in some detail. I can go in a lot more depth than I will be in this uh, video. But um, let me start by saying what our perceptions are today. And then I will continue from there. So the idea that we are uh, neurons firing our body, okay, and that if we understand our brain and our neurons, the way they are firing and our hormones and the balance of our hormones, uh, we can understand human behavior. So this is one big part of what has always existed. And the other big part of what's existed is that the idea of the ideas of Darwin and Darwinism and his theory that not only where we came from but somehow you know we're just animals and it explains a lot of our behavior it explains our buying and selling it explains our ethics it explains our religious experience all you have to do is point to the right spot in the brain find where the religious experience is and you'll know where the religious experience is uh, and uh, like in one of the instances uh, where you know you take what is taken the, called the MRI, which is con in a lot of, uh, one of the myths about the MRI is, oh, if you see a brain scan uh, of activity in the brain, that's where that's taking place. But, you know, something, which I'll talk about the problem of binding in a little bit, but something like love. Uh, if you take uh, a picture, for example, of friends you know, and then you take a picture of someone you love, and you see the difference, okay, there was activity here when he was looking at his friends, and now there's activity here when he's looking at his lover. The difference between that is where love is in the brain. This type of localization of uh, trying to figure out where certain emotions and, uh, you know, feelings are in the brain has been severely criticized. And this type of localization that, oh, it's here in the brain, um has been severely criticized and uh, you know I'll, I'll just go ahead and talk about this but like if I'm taking a walk right um, it's a physical activity and then I am also thinking I'm making decisions I have my emotions and all of these things are in different parts of the brain but as I'm going along the street having different emotions making different decisions making the physical walk all these different aspects of the brain are seamless and this is one of the mysteries of the brain because um, with no matter how much speed we have the uh, the speed the, the the this the you can say the synchronicity of it is such that it's almost like it's it's bound together more than that it's in this part of the brain in this part of the brain in this part of the brain and we would find a lot more problems because also there is no center of the central brain which means that we know that neurons through neuroplasticity you can shift uh, where for example if you learned an art of some sort let's say playing a piano uh, and you, you played the piano and now it's embedded in a certain part of the brain but if that part of the brain gets damaged it can move to another part of the brain and so how does binding work in instances like that? And what, am I, what I'm coming to is that we have overly exaggerated the idea that we, can, we understand what a human being essentially is by understanding Darwin and his ideas and by understanding uh, neurology and the brain. So the brain is the answer to everything. And that's what I'm saying is that we understand now that no, this is not the case. And let me give you... Uh, one uh, very good example of this. But before I actually do that, let me also mention that therefore, as one famous writer writes, the brain is a machine of events. And if you figure out this machine, you can tell where love is, where all the different emotions are, what your secrets are. And uh, so it becomes, and many neuroscientists now have written on this, that there's no free will. And there's some experiments that they've done to show this, and there's a lot of criticism of that too. Um, but even things like aesthetics. Why does the brain like 
symmetric for art, for example, or where is religious behavior, or even buying and selling. Uh, what, the, which part of the brain says buy now, and which part of the brain that's over here in the forelock uh, says no, 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 you should wait for a little bit longer. Uh, how do we? How do ethics and morality take place? Well, in Darwin would explain. People who believe in the idea of Darwin would say it simply is explained with the idea of inclusiveness, which, again, has problems, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, so, uh, yes, the brain is important to have a normal life, but the brain itself does not explain consciousness. And also another thing, the consciousness of the nearest kin from a biological Darwinian perspective, the nearest kin to human beings the, the, is that we have experiments that, that, that show a monkey's, a, uh, to monkeys objects are only existing as long as they're experiencing that object and then after that they don't exist. So their intentionality, the intention, and this is going to be very important, um, their intentionality is limited. Their understanding of the world around them is limited. And even, uh, even learning behavior, the way human beings learn and then teach their offspring, um, or our eating behavior, where it's not just a biological phenomenon, but there's a lot more that goes into uh, eating, uh, the decisions we make, what we're going to eat, and so on and so forth. Um, it, there's a lot more to the human uh, mind uh, than that can just be simply explained with the MRIs or the PET scans. And let me give you one good example of that. Uh, people that have obsessive compulsive disorder uh, so their brain is when it's put under the PET scan their brain is firing do this do this do this so they have an obs obsession so let's say his this person's obsession is he's gonna scream after every 20 minutes and there are cases like this but when this person makes the intention that and he goes through a process of therapy that I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do this and he's telling himself and even though his brain is firing okay his neurons are firing but his intention not to do so overrides his brain, which is very important because is, you know, you can say the brain is on top of the heart, uh, literally as well as metaphorically. Your, your heart wants one thing, your mind tells you rationally what you should do, but there is intent, your intentions are, or your, uh, your intentions are above your mind uh, when you look at it from that perspective. And so, like I said, these people that have obsessive compulsive disorder, they were able to change their behavior, even though uh, the brain was telling them to do uh, something different. And, uh, and it would be interesting to, to have more studies uh, in this direction. Um, you know, Libet, for example, uh, and many other people who experimented with the brain and, you know, putting electrical charges in different parts of the brain and seeing what happens. I mean, we've done studies like, okay, what's going to cause a twist of the hand and how long it'll take bef before we put in, press that button and before we do it, which has led some people to the conclusion we don't have free will. Um, <clears throat> so the intentionality is what is closest to what we can say yourself. Yourself, your, yourself, your understanding of yourself is most close to your idea of your intention, right? And uh, and then also, as I've already uh, talked about the problem of uh, the the problem of uh, the binding problem. So what has happened is that um, we have very simple rudimentary answers that sound rational on the outset, like Darwin his theory of evolution explains uh, you know why we behave the way we behave or neuroscience the brain touching this part of the brain and that part of the brain can explain away uh, the complexity of human beings whereas this is not true because the difference between the just as there there is as much difference between uh, Objects that are not conscious of themselves like for example, let's say a computer you had it's like a brain But it's not conscious of itself. It's, it's not aware of itself in the same way There is that that much more difference between the nearest biological cousin or uh, Kin of a human being to what human beings are 
that's the difference. The difference is so phenomenal because the difference, just if you take one more example, uh, if you take the example of language, okay, uh, human beings have language, we, with our language, what we are able to do with language, uh, the literary stuff, the, the, the way we're able to express the world, have philosophies, have ideas, these are not things that uh, can be understood in a localization of a MRI or a PET scan. This is, seems to be a lot more complicated than that. You know, the abstract concepts that even a child understands abstract concepts when he starts imitating and copying the adults. Uh, when children start playing active imagination, pretending someone that they're not, they are beginning to understand the world, uh, the abstract concepts. Uh, even though up till the age of seven, they understand a lot of things in black and white, this is true, but they also have uh, a very deep, uh, when it comes to active imagination, it's very abstract. Uh, so, uh, when it comes to things like mathematics, uh, and the question of why, I mean, there's no, uh, you know, a, a, no question of an ape thinking about uh, why this happened to me, or let me look at the sky and be in awe. There's something, uh, and what I'm trying to say is there's something greater than a human being, and we're at the edge of now seeing this in the idea of intentionality or something greater than the brain. That has an influence over the brain, that like with obsessive compulsive disorder people, they try to tell themselves, try to... Uh, they try to rearrange the thought patterns of their brain and change. And so uh, this goes a lot into what's happening with pharmacology and how, you know, uh, versus uh, dealing with human intentions and intentionality. And like I said, that's the closest thing to the self. So I'll just leave it at that um, for now, but I'll be talking uh, more about this in some of my other lectures, uh, inshallah, cinematic.